and welcome to a new discussion which is on image interpretation of different geological landforms, rock types and structures. Uh, in the previous discussion as uh, I mentioned that uh, image interpretation is very important and uh, we just saw one example of image interpretation related with groundwater. Though we will have detailed inter discussion on uh, how to do the image interpretations for groundwater uh, estimations and uh, uh, basically groundwater exploration and uh, groundwater recharge. Similarly, here we are uh, going to have interpretations about geological landforms, structures, rock types which are very useful for not only for geologists or scientists but also for civil engineers. So that is why I am keeping uh, this discussion here. The keys which we have just discussed in how to do image interpretation or the keys of image interpretations, all uh, those keys will be used uh, here directly. We may not mention that I am using this key, but uh, all those keys in uh, combination and uh, depending on the uh, image or uh, what kind of data we are having in front of us, accordingly the interpretation will be done. If I see um, an image uh, which is showing part of India and uh, surrounding countries, what uh, we see uh, uh, the Himalaya and how we are saying that this is a, a Himalayan mountain chain or system is that because we are uh, realizing that it is having a association of white patches which might be snow and ice or glaciers. There are some uh, water bodies which is in part of Tibbat, there are water bodies in part of uh, south of Himalaya is a arch shape and uh, lot of this is true color image. So, lot of greenery is also seen in the plain area which is Indogantic plain. And so, when we saw this kind of thing, it becomes very easy to interpret. So, the shape, color, tone, texture, association, everything is being used here to identify that this is a Himalaya. So, this is how uh, we start doing the real interpretation. So, here what uh, as you can see that uh, Brahmaputra is also there, uh, Ganges is also flowing there, there are mountains, desert areas are also can be seen with, without any divide, it's a divide of vegetation. And the central India is having undulating train, uh, terrain which you can see whereas Himalayan terrain is highly rugged then the plateau uh, that is the Tibetan part is also can be seen. There are some lakes are there like Mansrovar and others, they can be also, they, those lakes can also be seen here in this image. So, uh, using all those keys which we have just learned in previous discussion are all being used to interpret and this particular uh, image, though it is not a single image, it is a mosaic of several image and that too it has been projected on the globe so that we get the not only the height information, but how it is located on the globe that information is also there. So, we, ident we, we are easily uh, able to identify mountains, we are easily identify plains, valleys, rivers, lakes desert area I have just mentioned, glaciers also and so on and so forth. So, just one single image, whatever the objects which are present here can be identified very easily here. And not only the desert which you are seeing in Indian part, uh, also you are seeing in the northern part here also the desert. So, you can identify things very easily. If I go for more finer details, now only mainly the India is being shown in this, uh, this is Landsat uh, uh, TM mosaic that is also in true color. So, here uh, uh, the uh, these glaciated land is being shown in blue color and uh, e even uh, uh, you are seeing the sea and other parts also, uh, generally it is in black color, but except uh, in the this Sundarban area uh, where you are seeing things are in blue color because of lot of turbidity uh, that is there. So, that is bringing not black color in color composites, but as a blue color. So, blow up on the right side 
or zoomed part of that uh, is also on the right side. Now we can identify the delta that is the, this uh, Brahmaputra and Ganges are making in the, the way of Bengal. So that delta we can identify the uh, because we are identifying based on the pattern of the drainage and also the, the part which we are seeing as uh, having lot of uh, uh, siltation or turbidity which is present in the water body initially. And also on the uh, right side of uh, the delta we, are ident we can see several uh, you know uh, ranges, mountain ranges or uh, geologically, we, we can say these are the folded mountains which we are seeing in the northeast part of the India. So, this is how the interpretation can start. Now, when we see further zoom part of that one, then it becomes easier to identify that is a uh, fold belt, folded belt area. In between two, uh, uh, you know, folds, we are sometimes also getting water bodies in it. And the, we are also seeing closures of these folds at uh, different locations uh, in the northern part. When we see the a radar image, which we have already discussed, the radar image, this is a intensity image or also called power image, there we can identify uh, these things much more clearly uh, uh, because uh, here the vegetation and other things are not affecting that much and therefore uh, we can identify say part of Tripura of northeast India. We can identify different geological features which are present, fold, uh, fold belt, various folds are there, their closures are there and of course water bodies, drainage, drainage system can also be identified very easily. So, using such images, we can make interpretations that how a folded part of rocks is uh, appears on the surface as shown here in this uh, 3D diagram that uh, they will appear something like this that uh, these dipping on the opposite direction and is a anticline fold and also we get feeling about whether it is a, a symmetric anticline or a symmetric anticline. So, interpretations to that level can go and now in this one, we are also visualizing what is beneath the, uh, these rocks are there, beneath these uh, landforms which we are seeing on the satellite images. So, we started with the uh, very simple interpretations using those keys which we have discussed in previous uh, lecture and now we have started interpreting using these images along with of, of course our uh, geological knowledge and we started interpreting what is beneath the surface in this area and this for individual folds and other things we can identify. Similarly here when we go further uh, zoom, uh, zooming part here we can uh, individually see that uh, they are the closures which are uh, seen here, here also the closures are there and uh, a fold belt again northeast India and uh, uh, you know anticlinal asymmetric fold is there. Sometimes we uh, you know what we are seeing only the top part here, not the beneath. So, interpreting this part using a 3D perspective view that is possible very easily in Google Earth, then we can make the interpretation that is a anticline only uh, uh, only the uh, parts of these two limbs of that anticline are seen, the top part that is the hinge region is has got eroded. We are seeing only these uh, two limbs and they are dipping in opposite direction and therefore it has to be a fold. So, we are getting subsurface information just looking the surface information. Similarly, if I am seeing in the same area because if there is anticline, there might be also possibility of getting a syncline which is just opposite in that means. Uh, so, here what we are seeing that uh, 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 on the top we are we, we may not be seeing the core, but when these uh, uh, rocks are or beds are dipping towards each other and we are seeing a kind of uh, depression in between it becomes easier to identify that this is a synclinal fold 
that we can see in 3D perspective much easier. Even without having if we do not have the 3D perspective still such interpretations to some extent can be made easily. So, that kind of interpretation can be done. If we find closers as uh, here shown anticline nose is there, then we can uh, see here. Uh, the many of the slides uh, have been given to me by one of my friends and uh, who is very good on interpretation. So, I am using his slides here and I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, Dr. Jasodhi Das for this and uh, his interpretation skills uh, through him I have also learned these interpretations especially of this part of the country. So, the plunging, so we have uh, we have identified anticline, we have identified syncline and closers. Now, we are seeing the you know these plunges. So, there that uh, because the closers are there in the images. So, these images uh, can also uh, tell us that there are the anticlinal nose is there that it means the closer of the fold is also very clearly visible. So, if I when I see the image I might be seeing something like this. So, when I see the bed pattern on the surface as like this these closers will have this kind of expression as shown here. So, this is how we do interpretations. If we look uh, for the same area again radar image it gives a, a, a much more detailed information about the uh, topography or uh, you know these landforms and interpretations uh, can be done. We can create a merge product of uh, optical images along with radar images and can do much more better reliable interpretations. So, we can uh, we can do interpretations about in anticline, syncline, we can do the interpretations about plunging force through identifying closers and uh, many such interpretations can be done. Now, let us take another example of an area where vegetation is not a problem and still we get uh, a very good interpretation about images. This uh, is the Jinda Pir uh, anticline in uh, located in Pakistan and uh, we, we see very clearly there is uh, these folds are visible here, here very clearly these folds can be seen in the central Pakistan which is uh, formed because of compression of collision due to the drift of Indian subcontinent to the north direction and th those anticlines have created. Now, importance of these anticlines because they are the gas reservoirs and that is why uh, interpretations of such images and understanding such structures are very, very important. Similarly, we are also seeing in the Suleiman thrust belt uh, again a uh, lot of uh, uh, landforms features fold thrust faults all those can be seen very easily because uh, these these areas are having minimum vegetation and uh, when the sky is clear images are taken then interpretations of such areas uh, becomes very very uh, easy this area is one of the major and uh, natural gas production areas in Pakistan. So, uh, though on surface we are not seeing any uh, evidences of uh, 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 these gas or oil reserve, but of course these structures tells that there, uh, there are possibilities. So, based on that uh, further explorations are required and that has been done. These closures again you are seeing the folded belt and other things are there. This is uh, another very famous uh, uh, satellite image from Jagros mountain of Iran that is a fold belt located here in this uh, uh, you know southwest uh, uh, or south of Iran. There you can see that uh, these uh, folds are there, their closers are there very clearly and again it is also having very less vegetation. So, um, it becomes much easier to make interpretations. Same again from the same Jagros mountain fold belt having some other uh, high resolution satellite images these fold belts and domes and other structures can be identified very easily from these images. 
while doing these interpretations of course we are using I am repeating again we are using these keys here and this is a, a, a Richard a, a, a structure of Mauritania see the circular structure huge eye of the earth in the Sahara desert and this is a dome structure and that has been formed by the intrusive rocks which are which uh, have come from uh, interior of the earth and they have created such a uh, structures so these because of the you know the pattern uh, and association and of course colors another thing we can identify and that it is a dome structure in here. if we see a volcano this is how it should be and uh, the zoom part you can see the volcanic neck and uh, that eruption has occurred this is false color composite and but it occurred uh, you know way back in uh, 79 AD and uh, the, uh, it has brought lot of fertile you know rocks or soil developed a good soil and therefore you are seeing in false color composite uh, good growth of vegetation or forest along this but uh, still we can identify that is a volcano uh, there similarly if we see a active volcano then this is what we will be seeing different and uh, no uh, not yet growth of vegetation but different lava flows can be identified and volcanic neck and other things can be identified very easily this is from the uh, bolivia chile border area so uh, all these kind of objects if we see an image of a desert then dunes and uh, what kind of dune these can be identified uh, of uh, this image belongs to the namibia of africa and uh, what we are seeing there are different types of dunes are there in desert conditions so this dunes which we are seeing are the longitudinal dunes which you can also identify running for kilometers together long uh, dunes running and uh, uh, we can also identify the uh, you know prevalent uh, uh, wind direction that might be like this so uh, using these uh, information uh, we can also have the lot of information if we go for our own uh, third desert uh, though we don't have that uh, resolution image but uh, still these dunes longitudinal dunes can be identified on the image between border of india and pakistan uh, because uh, generally desert areas are very flat only dunes are creating undulations devoid of completely almost completely devoid of vegetation this though is a, a google earth image it is in true color but nonetheless you don't identify and and you do not have water bodies either and uh, hardly you would see a drainage system or anything so it becomes much easier to using these keys to identify whether it's a desert area or not and uh, wherever you are having a water body uh, like here in part of Pakistan you are seeing lot of uh, growth of vegetation agriculture practice is going on and that is what you see here in other parts of India of course the vegetation growth is there the niche pattern and uh, that you also see dunes say uh, on the ground they look like this so they, there are undulations but when uh, these undulations are of only few meters so in the images you may not get that kind of effect of shadow nonetheless say if it is a high resolution satellite images of desert you will see shadows as well and then you can identify different types of dunes and based on their uh, location and shape one can identify prevalent uh, wind direction as well now i am also having one more image is the great dike uh, uh, you know very world famous dike a uh, geological feature uh, of zimbabwe where it is running of 530 kilometer long and uh, 3 to 12 kilometer wide this dike which you are seeing in the center of this image and uh, of course the age and other things cannot be determined on the images but uh, this information is coming from elsewhere that it is 2.46 billion years old but the important point here if we can identify such dikes or very old dikes there are chances of getting mineral deposits and valuable mineral deposits have been identified have been searched in this part of the world 
in the Zimbabwe. So, these structures are important. We have seen uh, folds, anticlinal folds and other things where oil and natural gas is being uh, used or exploited. Similarly, we are seeing a dike through image interpretations of course, we are seeing, but uh, these are these can be a valuable uh, metal deposits or ore deposit areas uh, which one can use. So, uh, depending on where it is located, what is the association, what is the color and other things we can identify. This is a um, glacier, very famous glacier, Malaspina glacier of Alaska and uh, see the glacier you can identify, you can also identify the different moraines which are along the glacier, some other glaciers is a fence shaped glacier, but there are other glaciers are also there. So, you can uh, by while doing image interpretations and having knowledge of glaciated terrain lot of uh, things can be extracted from the image. So, as uh, also mentioned earlier that uh, a, a picture tells 1000 words and whereas, a satellite image can tell 10,000 words only it requires a good skill of image interpretation. Then lot of uh, things can be extracted from the image. This is the 3D perspective view of the Malaspina Alaska glacier which we are seeing. Sometimes uh, we use the um, uh, successive data or, uh, uh, or data from other sources. We can put uh, on the same image or uh, on the boundary and we can identify how things have changed that is basically the change detection study. So, in 1780s of course, we did not have a, uh, our satellite images only these started coming after 1972. But uh, these were based on topo sheets or uh, field surveys and other things. So, people have identified that uh, the glacier was uh, here and uh, now it has retreated and now you are seeing the snout of that glacier here. So, the images can also help. So, if we can have images this is 1964 this information is uh, also coming from aerial photograph and all these things can be put together and the chain detection studies uh, can be found how things have changed, what is the rate and other thing. So, other otherwise a simple uh, image of a glaciated part of Himalaya, but if we start using these images along with the, some other data sets as I also mentioned related with groundwater, then lot of interpretations can be done with this and this is what exactly is done in the GIS also. Now, there is also another image, another very good example of this image that uh, you are having an image of uh, Bestiboka river in north central Madagascar and as you can see that uh, beautiful landform is being formed and finally, this river meets the sea also. So, different colors are telling the turbidity or uh, concentration of particles size may be the size of particles, the growth of vegetation, the pattern and everything is uh, so clearly visible in these images. This is again part of India and uh, these are our Indian river uh, Ganges and, uh, uh, and this is Ganges and what we are seeing the meanders, oxbow lakes. So, they are all associated with the, uh, the uh, images. Uh, with the, uh, with the river system which is flowing in a almost flat terrain like indo gangetic plain. So, these when river is having then these structures will be they are paleo channels, oxbow lakes and, uh, and uh, these uh, meanders can be seen very clearly in the images. These are the very good uh, if somebody is interpreting these images then these are the uh, paleo channels. Uh, or uh, these oxbow lakes are very good source of water. So, one can identify very easily where these structures are there like here I am seeing no water body, but still the form land form is being visi is visible and therefore, I it becomes easier to identify or guess that uh, what uh, ground water availability is going to be very high in such areas. Similarly, this is this is braided channel of Brahmaputra what you are seeing here. You can uh, you can guess about the erosional conditions in upstream area which is supplying huge sediment 
into the Brahmaputta river and that is why uh, these things. So, sometimes in the images what you see uh, that is important, but how it is being formed, what is the, uh, what is happening at the source of this uh, where from the water is coming in the river can also be estimated or guessed or ident interpreted that probably such things are happening that is why I am seeing this thing. This is world famous uh, alluvial fan which we are seeing, uh, this is a, a Google Earth image and uh, this, uh, uh, this river, the Kosi river which starts from Nepal and then which enters in the uh, northern Bihar and uh, uh, then ultimately it uh, meets uh, Ganges. And what you are seeing a fan shaped uh, uh, landform which is called alluvial fan. Earlier this river used to flow like this and in about 150 years it has migrated slowly towards the east. And uh, every year it is, this river is also bringing uh, floods in, uh, in the uh, plains of Bihar. And uh, we can see the paleo channels, we can see other and landforms associated with fluvial systems and we can also see that which are the inundated areas in this uh, uh, area which uh, are uh, there of northern Bihar. So, lot of interpretations uh, can be done and should be done. Whatever is being seen in the images should be uh, understood and whatever is not being seen but maybe uh, the source of uh, that uh, change in landforms or creation of that landform should be assessed. For example, if I start interpreting, then why this uh, I have to have some background knowledge, then only that kind of um, interpretation can come. But let me just very briefly, because the huge sediment supply is coming from uh, in this uh, Koshi river from Nepal, might be due to a lot of human activities lot of constructions of roads or buildings and other things and deforestation. And the, when torrential rain is there that brings, lo, that creates lot of erosion in the part of Himalaya or the Kosi basin that brings lot of uh, uh, sediments in the river and as soon as the sediment enters in the plain area, the river loses the energy and it start depositing those sediments in this plain area and therefore, uh, such structures or such landforms of such magnitude of a huge scale are This is world biggest uh, alluvial fan which uh, can be easily identified in satellite images. And it is because of a uh, lot of sediment supply. So, tomorrow if uh, by some means, by some measures, if uh, sediment supply is reduced significantly, probably we might not be seeing such uh, devastating behavior of uh, this river every year during monsoon season. So, what my point was here that what you see in the images is fine, you can identify, but one should go beyond that what you are not, uh, what you are seeing. One should go what you are not seeing and try to interpret that. That is only possible if you are having knowledge of that area and for what you are going to make interpretations accordingly. If I look for and this uh, same image for a, a civil engineer point of view, then if a, a, if a bridge has to be constructed here, a site has to be located across this, then one need to find out where the migration of this river is minimum and channel is narrow. So, the same image can be interpreted by a civil engineer for different purpose. And the same image same data set can be interpreted by a geologist or a scientist completely differently. And the same image can be interpreted by agriculture scientists completely differently, a soil scientist differently, a forester or a, a you know um, those who are interested for forest or uh, green management, they can look at the or interpret this image differently. So, this is, this is what a, uh, that is why we can get 10,000 words from an image. Because it is a generic data and uh, the same image can be applied or used by various people for various purposes. And this is what uh, we do in satellite data image interpretation. So, this brings to end of this discussion. Thank you very much.